All right, well, welcome back, everybody. My name's Andrew, and we're down at what I'm going to officially start calling my wood yard. So you may want to stay tuned for this particular episode. We're going to have tractors in it. We're going to have chainsaws, chainsaw sharpening. We're going to go over some of these log weights. We're going to see what this tractor can lift. We're going to move some stuff around with it. So it's going to be jam-packed. We're also going to have some firewood tools and a few brief explanations on that. So this episode could run quite long, but I plan on making it very interesting. So let's get started. All right, if y'all watched one of my last episodes, I went and picked up some massive chunks of water oak and a very nice piece of red oak here from a tree service company that's been uh, supplying me with wood for firewood. So today we're gonna crunch some numbers, do some measurements, figure out what some of this weighs. I would like to get it moved and bucked up closer to where I split. Plus I wanna get it out in the sun so y'all can have some better viewing whenever we fire up the old steel chainsaw. All right, so I've been back and forth on if I'm gonna cut up this beautiful red oak for firewood or if I'm gonna to try to slab it down later. I've been looking for a nice piece to slab for some bar tops. And when I say bar top, I don't mean the working surface of a bar like where I'd be cutting up food, but a next level up to where people would put drinks, lean on, have some stools. So I don't necessarily need such a wide piece of wood for that. I'm still not so sure and convinced that this is as wide as I need. However, it's a beautiful straight piece and I kinda of hate to turn it into firewood. Although we do have a little bit of rock going on in the other end, I just don't know how deep it goes in there. So, this tree bark to bark is around 22 and three quarter inches. Pretty good size. It would be nice to have 25 plus inch trees, but I can't be too picky. And obviously the further back I cut, the wider this gets because uh, it does start flaring out pretty good. So I really kind of hate to turn this into firewood. I've got some idea in mind for stool tops. I got some ideas in mind for uh, some outdoor uh, side tables and coffee tables, things like that, that I may save some of this wood for. The red oak in particular, uh, I kind of think I want to slab out to like maybe some eight foot long and a six foot long bar top because we're planning on making an L-shaped bar on the outside of our uh, house that we're about to start building for an outdoor kitchen and kind of entertaining area. So we got plans for the other end. Let's take a look at that. So if we look down this log, it's nice, straight, and beautiful. I mean, I kind of would love to do a live edge, but it's pretty marred up. I don't know if I get a live edge that doesn't have bark chipped all out of it from where uh, the grapple and tractor forks and everything else got on it. But live edge isn't something I absolutely have to have. We got a little bit of problem going on on this end. So if you take a look here, we got a little bit of rot. However, I only see it going in there about 10 to 12 inches, but it's really hard to say until you start cutting in. So I'm gonna start from this end cutting firewood because a rotten end does me no good. And we'll see how far we can get in there. If this goes way into the tree, hey, we may just have to turn this into firewood, but my gut says it doesn't go too far and we can save a nice straight, what I'm gonna call saw log. Now these other pieces are, uh, they look like water oak to me. They kind of, kind of got that slick bark. I don't think it's a laurel oak. I'm pretty sure this is just a massive water oak. I've heard that they split and check real bad, probably not the best for furniture, but I've got some pretty big, beautiful pieces here that I'm thinking about cutting some really nice cookies off of and saving and drying, because these would make awesome little end tables, you know, if I had a cookie that was two or three inches thick. Um, so I'm thinking about saving a couple of those. Everything else is absolutely going to firewood. Water oak makes excellent firewood, probably our most common oak tree down here in the south. Then you got a few pieces like this that's just so naughty, I don't even want to deal with. This would also be another beautiful piece over here to try to cut for potential tabletop. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to fire up the chainsaw, turn a lot of this into firewood, really try out that new MS-462. I'm so happy to finally have some green wood here for once to really sink it into. All right, I promise we're going to get cutting here soon, but several of y'all have commented that y'all are interested on how much these weigh. I myself am too. I want to see what the tractor can really do if I'm gonna have to roll these over or if I can lift them up so I've got online and found a log weight calculator how accurate they are I really don't know but we're gonna give you the best numbers that I can based off what I find on the internet so let's start with the old red oak here and let's see if it's something that tractor can even pick up I'm very curious about how much this weighs I have a rough idea in mind I think it's gonna be way too heavy so we'll get some quick dimensions length and uh, diameter on each end we'll crunch some numbers All 
All right, so I just crunched the numbers on this southern red oak, and it's actually a little bit lighter than I was thinking, but I will let you know, I only measured it out to 12 feet, and it's about 12 feet 8. I decided I want to leave a little short to account for some of the rot that's in the end, so I don't truly know how much weight that takes out, but I'm trying to go ahead and lob some off to make sure that I'm not saying that this is a whole lot heavier than it is. I really think it's heavier than the number that I'm going to give you. So uh, 12 foot long is what I did, even though it's 12 foot 8. It's uh, 20 two and three quarters on that end, a little over 28 on this end, I just said 28 inches. And according to this, estimated weight is 2,441 pounds. My guess was 3,000. I don't know much about the tree, so I guess I'm pretty happy being about 500 or so pounds off. So 2,441, the tractor is only rated to lift 22 or 2,300 at the pins now. That's right up front, not sticking way out front. So I have counterbalanced the tractor very well. We're gonna see if we can lift this one up. I'm gonna go ahead and crunch one more piece here. This looks like the biggest piece of water oak right here beside me. So let's see what it weighs. It's a lot shorter, but it's even bigger. So I'm very curious about that. All right, so I just got done crunching the numbers on this piece, even though it's much, much shorter, it's a lot bigger in diameter. And best I can come up with, since this doesn't do half feet, it looks like it's right around just under 1,900 pounds. So. That's a lot of weight for a piece this big. I think I remember saying in the last video, I guess that this might be somewhere around 2,000 pounds. So it looks like I'm slowly but surely getting this stuff figured out. Some of these other pieces like that one could actually be even bigger now that I'm looking at it. I might crunch some real quick figures, but it looks like the red oak's gonna be the heaviest thing that I have. And according to the weight that's on here, it's more than that tractor is designed to lift. So that's gonna be the one to really test it out. Well, as y'all can see, yet again, the old John Deere can lift more than factory recommendations. I've did this test once before. So if that calculator is correct, and again, I cut it short just because of this 12 inch rotten spot. I'm sure I cut off more weight than I should have, but I wanted to be fair in my test. So if this is about 2,450 pounds, you also gotta remember the forks are about another 300 pounds. So there's 2,750 pounds. The tractor's only rated to lift, I 
I think it was somewhere around 2,200 pounds. So we're well above spec. And again, this sticks way out from the pivot points on the tractor. So no doubt in my mind, if we were at the pivot points, I think we could lift almost almost a thousand pounds more than what it's rated. I don't recommend doing that on a daily basis. You will absolutely stress your front axles out and always make sure you have a heavy counterbalance on there. And it's not just about weight. I see a lot of people talk about, I'm putting the heaviest thing I can on the rear. Well, if that happens to be your box blade and it's sitting up close, putting your bush hog on the back that's sticking out six feet will give you leverage and will actually help you when lifting heavy like this. But that's all about getting the stress off your front axle. And a few people have asked, yes, my back tires are filled. My dealer absolutely would not sell a loader without filling the back tires. I think it's a legal thing. So impressive nonetheless. We're gonna uh, fire up the steel uh, MS-462 and get to cutting some of this. First, I'm gonna sharpen the chain up real quick. I just got my steel two-in-one sharpener in. We're gonna pull out a firewood gadget real quick, the Mingo marker. I've had a couple people ask me about it and uh, then we're gonna get tearing into some wood. Hopefully we don't find rotten stuff too far down this log and I can save some of it. If not, it's gonna make excellent firewood along with the rest of what's right here behind you. All right, if y'all have watched the channel for any length of time, you have seen that I've did a couple videos on this steel two-in-one sharpener and I am a huge, and I mean huge fan of it. Up until this, I didn't ever trust myself sharpening any chain. I always carried it to people. Then you wind up paying 10, 11 bucks to get it sharpened. It's a $30 chain before you know it. You're a pile of money just in chains and keeping up with them. Whereas you can buy one of these online, $30 something dollars or $45 at your local dealer, and you can sharpen a lot of chains and save them. So I'm gonna touch this up real quick. I've actually bumped the ground a few times with it, even though it's a relatively new chain. So I'm sure I've dulled it up some. And I want to show y'all real quick how I use this. We'll get on to cutting. So most importantly, make sure you get one that's rated for your proper chain. And there's two three eights out there. I found this out the wrong way years ago whenever I first bought the one for my MS-170. There's a three eights Pico chain, which is much smaller than this one. And there's a three eights chain you typically find on some of the larger mid class to larger saws. So three HP is for Pico for the real small, like 170s, 180s. The three eights has a much bigger round file and it's for your larger chainsaws. My steel MS-260 Pro uses a .325. That's a very common size chain in the kind of middle size homeowner class and pro saw. So now I have wound up with three of these. There's an arrow on top and you see it's at an angle right here. That is critical whenever you're sharpening the chain. You take your round file right here, you stick it underneath the tooth, and this angle right here lines up with your saw. So you're sharpening at almost a 45 degree angle but it's the correct angle for the tooth. I don't know the exact degrees, but it's foolproof. Arrow for the upside, the direction you go, match the angle up with the bar, hook it up underneath the tooth, go to town. I always start with, you'll notice on these chains, they have a coloration. They're usually yellow, green, depending on the style chain that you have. So I'll start one of those and work my way all the way back around to it. And you spin this all around for the teeth that are going the different direction, flip your file over, go right back to doing it. On a super dull chain, about five passes I have found will really touch them up. On a moderately dull chain, three, maybe even four passes if you want to, will really touch them up and it removes quite a bit of metal. So enough yakking, let me get started here. I like to loosen my chain when I do this. I don't clamp it in a vise or nothing, but a loose chain helps me spin it around quick and easy. wonderful thing about these uh, files right here is they have a flat file in the middle. We we'll actually take down what everybody calls is a depth gauge, but uh, it's a raker. And that's what controls the depth that your tooth digs down into the wood. That's pretty critical that you knock those down at least every two to three sharpenings. Otherwise you'll find that a sharp chain just isn't cutting very well because that old kind of shark fin shape raker right there is keeping it from actually digging down in the wood these will take that down as well. So it makes it such a speedy process. All right, I had one viewer that told me they just bought this Mingo marker. It's a spray paint marker that measures this one every 16 inches. You can get different wheels for different sizes. And uh, the viewer told me that, hey, 
I'm having a problem getting this thing to spray. Is there a special type of spray paint that you're supposed to use? And absolutely there is. This is the one I use. It's called an inverted marking paint. And you can see it's got a, a special nozzle that sprays up, not forward. You have to get this style. It doesn't have to be necessarily Rust-Oleum in order to fit through that hole in the bottom and spray down. So make sure you get inverted marking paint. It's very common. You can find it just about anywhere.
That was a dang good cutting session. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of questions from y'all on why did I cut up these beautiful trees. Well, some of them had knots and limbs and stuff in it. Other ones just weren't quite the length I was looking for. And I feel pretty confident that I'm going to get a lot more trees like this in the future. So, I don't have a sawmill. I don't even have an Alaskan sawmill yet, but I'm seriously considering getting one. So, I'm just not so sure that I want a whole bunch of trees in my way just yet. I did save that big, beautiful red oak over there. I'm about to go measure it and see how long it was. Let me go check that real quick. So I wound up with over nine feet of good solid wood in that red oak. Actually, just a few inches in, like I figured, was the only rotten part. But there were a couple channels that ran just a little further in. Everything else was solid around it. So I decided to go ahead and take two blocks of firewood off of it. It's 24 and a quarter inches on this end, 22 at the other. So that's relatively straight and even, although it does flare a little. And nine, nine foot, three inches long, so I can easily get eight foot stuff out of it. I'm not looking to cut board lumber around here or anything like that. But for a couple tops or some furniture pieces, that may work out pretty good. Although the live edge portion of it's damaged and uh, not something that I can have. So what I'll do is I'll probably put that log off to the side. I need to find me an area to do that, to save some logs. I may even take some of those telephone poles that I have to kind of get them up off the ground. That's something I'm going to play with here coming up. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Jam-packed. I would keep cutting, but as y'all can see, I'm losing a lot fast. So that's just the way it goes. I want to let the saw cool off. I've got a few more tanks of gas through it today. So we're almost to the point of what I consider broke in. I want to get a few more tanks through it. We'll come out here another day and start busting all these huge rounds in half. I mean, some of these are a few hundred pounds, way more than I could ever lift. So we need to split them into half before I could even roll them over to the log splitter. So that means we'll have another cutting video coming up. We have a lot more splitting videos coming up, uh, especially now that I've got the modifications made to the splitter. I'm really eager to put that through its paces and try out that new mechanism that I made. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you've been enjoying this. I've been having a heck of a time making these videos. I'm loving it. I'm excited about next year, getting all this firewood ready. I've saved me some huge cookies and a saw log. I think I'm going to try to make some custom furniture out of some of this. But who knows what we're going to wind up getting next. Every time I'll go over uh, to the tree service company and pick up trees, I don't know what I'm going to get. I'm going to wind up with some more beautiful logs than this down the road. No doubt about that. So again, thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.